Actualmente vemos en, en nuestra cultura como que todo se busca fundamentar en el, en el amor, ¿verdad? Que debemos buscar amar a las personas y que todo gira alrededor del amor. Pero cuando nos ponemos a pensar más claramente al respecto, vemos que hay una diferencia entre lo que se conoce eh, como amor en el mundo, en la cultura actual, en, en el mundo secular y lo que bíblicamente es realmente el amor. Entonces, ¿cómo podemos contrastar esas dos cosas? El amor secular, digamos, y el amor bíblico. Y cómo nosotros también podemos vivir ese amor bíblico y, y mostrarlo al mundo. So what we really need is a definition of love. And that's the big dividing point between a secular worldview and a biblical worldview. In a secular worldview perspective, love is seen as coming alongside someone on whatever ever kind of journey that they're on and affirming that for them. So it's coming along and saying, oh, if this is what you feel is right for you and this is what makes you happy, I'm not going to be judgmental of that. Instead, I'm going to come alongside you and affirm that and say, I'm here to be your cheerleader. I'm going to love you in that way. So that is a secular view of love. But in a biblical view of love, we actually have an objective basis for defining love, and that is in God himself. So when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus says, the two greatest commandments is number one, to love the Lord your God, and number two, to love others. That hierarchy is really important to understand. They're not on the same level. First, you have to love God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind, because when you do, that informs what it means to love others. So it's that love for God that defines how we love others, which a lot of times is going to be in conflict with that secular definition that I just described, because if what God says is good and right and helpful for someone, if that's different from what they think, As Christians, we have to go with what God says. So that person in culture, they might not feel loved by you. This is a really big thing for us to grapple with as Christians, because sometimes the way that we are objectively, correctly loving someone according to God, his standards and his definition is something that makes the person not necessarily feel loved because they have a different definition of love from which they're working. So just as a really popular example right now, when we're talking about gender identity, If someone says, well, I feel like I was born in the wrong body, I am a different gender. Well, as a Christian, we would say, God designed you the way that he did. You are objectively the biological sex that you were born, and that is your gender. We would tell them that, that truth out of love for them because it comes from God first, whereas they might feel this isn't loving. You're not loving me because you're not accepting me. Love does not mean acceptance of everything that someone wants. It doesn't mean acceptance of everything that they desire. It means coming alongside them and loving them enough to tell them the truth as it comes from God. 